Well now, Papias. These quill pens are well sharpened. Your ink all mixed. We want good readability. This will be a letter to the seven churches, Papias. Precisely, precisely. Uh, good arithmetic, nine copies, is just what we'll need. Uh, let's see, uh, seven in Greek, uh, you know, one in Aramaic for me, and, and one in Latin, <laughs> just in case. Yeah. Now, now, Papias, don't, don't start crying hand cramps again. From all those copies of the Acts of the Apostles you made, I know you have fingers of iron. <laughs> yeah, now then. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be to you, peace, from him who is and who was and, and who is to come, even our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. I received your letters with, with joy and gratitude. My thanks for your for your willingness to help the prisoners, uh, deepest thanks, make that my deepest thanks uh, for your willingness to help the prisoners here at Patmos Penal Colony in the ways that I've described. Timothy, we'll send deacons to you from Ephesus. Well, I, you, you've arrived early. <laughs> Splendid, splendid. I, I wasn't expecting you so soon. So, uh, how was the crossing from Ephesus? Rough. <laughs> Windy. Yes, well, it usually is. I trust that the, that the guards down at the pier weren't too troublesome. Oh, they searched you, did they? Well, well they were looking for, for scriptures. Or those newfangled fish amulets you're wearing nowadays. <laughs> you know, if the Roman commander here ever really decides to strictly enforce the anti-Christian edict, many of you would have to decide how much of a Christian you really are. You see, if you don't sacrifice to their divine emperor Domitianus, You'll be admitting that you're a Christian. <laughs> and, beloved, these, these Romans, well, well, they can kill you for that. So, until you've learned your way around this dangerous Roman world, please, please be careful. I, you've come such a long way to see me. I, I wouldn't want to lose you now. Well, where's Timothy? Uh, down in the camp. Uh, nothing wrong. No, tr no trouble. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Distributing the food. Good, 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 good. Well, welcome to Patmos. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful Patmos. I wasn't laughing uh, when the Romans first brought me here uh, two years, uh, well, nearly three years ago now. They put me down in that rock quarry cutting stone. I was 84 years old. Dawn to dusk hours, inhumane conditions, would have killed most men my age quite quickly. Life expectancy of the young inmates is hardly more than a year. But all my life I've been, I've been healthier and, and harder to kill than, than an Egyptian crocodile. <laughs> and, and you know, the Romans, beloved, they, they kept a close watch on me, too. They, 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 they were afraid that I'd make a break for it. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but I, I must admit, yeah, I, 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 I was not the model prisoner. No, you see, all day long as I, as I held the cutting chisel, I'd, I'd be telling the man swinging the hammer all about Jesus. Before the Romans knew what had happened, I'd converted half the inmates and five guards. <laughs> well, that's when the commander found me out and had me shut up in this cave. Surprised me, too. He could have killed me. When he didn't, I, I got suspicious. I, I got in touch with Timothy in Ephesus, and, and I asked him to find out why. Well, 
<laughs> it seems that the commander here has orders not to kill me or, or even hurt me. The, the procurator in Ephesus has, has, he's afraid that if anything happens to that Christian sorcerer that there'd be, that there'd be riots in the streets. <laughs> riots, can you imagine? Yeah, I suppose that he's one of those who have heard that I'll never die. Now, now, I, I, I suppose that, you know, uh, Jesus uh, uh, said to Peter about me that, that, uh, that I would never die. And, and somehow, uh, the Romans then, they began to boil me in oil, and the Lord Jesus delivered me, and then the rumor really spread. <laughs> I, I've just never been able to stop it. But now that I'm, now that I'm 86, and, and I feel like I'm 26, I'm beginning to wonder myself. <laughs> you see what I mean? Well, these Romans, they don't understand us Christians. When I die, when I die, I, I want a, a celebration. I, I, can you imagine what the Romans would think of all the praising God at my funeral? Oh, they'll be there just to make sure that I am. <laughs> but, oh, I... I, I I'm I just so glad that I'm still in the fight, beloved. I, if there's battle smoke to be smelled, I, I want to smell it. Of course, there's, there's precious little of it in this cave. No, 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 I'm not complaining. I, I'm not complaining, beloved. I, I have all of the amenities here. It's musty and, and damp. But it's, it's roomy enough, as, as caves go. It's big enough to chase pneumonia around in <laughs> and catch it. But, but, but I'm, not, I'm not complaining. I, and, and the Romans have given me their latest style of furniture, as you can see here. Romanus Prisanus. This piece that I'm sitting on should be called Romanus Porcupinus. But, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. It. Ah! And the Romans allow pets. Cave rats, you can ride the market. There go two of them now. I, I call these two Annas and Caiaphas because they're always together. I caught away again. I, I've, given them, I've given them all names, beloved. Herod stays back in that area over underneath there. And Pontius Pilate, he, he sneaks back and forth, back and forth underneath there. Sometimes at night, he, he comes out when I'm sleeping and, and, and does my toenails. Yeah. I, where was I? Oh, yes, yes, wow. Well, when I found out that I had an inch, uh, that, I, that I was fairly safe here, I, I immediately took a mile. Yeah, I arranged for Timothy to begin visiting me from Ephesus. And soon, soon he was carrying supplies and then visitors back and forth. And then, and then his young friend Papias here, he, he agreed to stay on and be my helper. Beloved, we've got a regular scriptorium going here. <laughs> it's true. It's true right under the Romans' noses. And that's a lot of shade. We, we copy out the epistles and the acts of the apostles and, and the three gospels, and, and we get them to Timothy in Ephesus, and he, he secretly distributes them amongst the churches. Oh, I, And they're used in the training of my beloved young missionary. I'm so glad that I, that I can still be useful. And, and I'm glad that, that you've come to visit me, too. 
did, did you know that, that the churches have even asked me to write a gospel? Can you imagine? They, they call it the gift that only I can give. Yeah, I suppose they mean by that, that that as far as we know, I'm the last living disciple that saw the Lord. Now, now Luke, Luke is still with us. Oh, thank God for that. Thank God. His, his letters are such a strength, such an encouragement. But, but, now, but now Luke, Luke was not with the Lord. You know, now, make no mistake, he hears Jesus' voice, but, but he was not with us. I, I told the churches that, that as far as I can see, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are are as complete and accurate a record of, of Jesus' acts and words as our faith will ever need. I, the youngest, least worthy of the disciples, I, I, I just should not, I should not presume to add to it. Hey, Papias, bring your eyes over here. Yeah, look down there, the cliff path coming up from the quarry. Did you see that? It, well, I know it's a Roman Papias, but can, can you make out who it is? The penal colony commander. Well, now what have I done? I, I, I can't think of anything new. You know, it could mean that he's decided to listen to my proposal on helping the prisoners. Yes, yes. Yeah. Take, Pappy, let's take those copies of, of epistles, uh, uh, of Peter's epistles, and put them way back there in that trunk in the dark. And, and those new papyrus copies of Luke's gospel, put it. Oh, you know, wait. Put a copy of Luke's gospel right here. Yes, right here in the open where he can see it. Of course he'll confiscate it. Well, Commander, <laughs> hey, come in, come in. Uh, sit down, sit down. Stand if you prefer. Yes, Commander, I believe that I do have a working proposal for helping the prisoners. All right, sir, here it is. Those walking skeletons that you have down in that quarry, they'll, they'll never cut enough stone to earn their own keep, much less make you a profit. Not as long as you keep them sick and demoralized and starving. But, but let me give them some, some, some decent food, some, uh, uh, some warm clothes and, and a good enough place to sleep and, 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 and give them enough hope that they'll live long enough to be released. And then, then you'll have a, a work crew that will cut marble for you, Commander. Then, then you'll see some of that profit you're supposed to get. No, 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 no cost to you. Uh, we'll, we'll provide everything. Uh, who's we? Well, uh, let's just say some friends of mine on the mainland. Never mind if they're Christian or what they are, Commander. You just get us a Roman quartermaster seal and we'll stamp every shipment with it the minute it gets to the pier in Ephesus right aboard with no difficulty. Keep, keep your secret, Commander. Keep our secret. If this thing is ever discovered, all you get is a mild reprimand. I get the slow boil in oil. You know, the Lord Jesus delivered me from that once. I know, I know, I've already told you, but I just want you to understand I don't want to tempt him again. Prophet. Prophet. How much of your profit do I want? You pagans are all alike. You cannot believe that anyone would do something for someone else simply because, simply because, you're right, I will say it, because it's the Christian thing to do. You and your, 
you and your cynical Roman disregard for the value of human life. I tell you, Commander, if I didn't have perfect control of my temper, I, 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 I beg your pardon. I, I, I beg your forgiveness. This infernal temper, it's been my lifelong curse. But I, I will discipline it if it's the last thing that I do in this life. Next time it may be, I see. All right, Commander, you've heard my proposal for helping those men. Now, now, you, uh, I don't want a widow's mite of your money, but, but you want pro uh, promotion and you want gold. Uh, do yourself a favor. Uh, say yes. Good. Uh, good. <laughs> you may be closer to the kingdom than you know. Yes, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll keep you completely informed. Yes, Timothy, Timothy will be in touch with you. Uh, uh, scroll. Uh, uh, scroll? Uh, what scroll? Oh, that scroll. I, uh, well, it, it, it's nothing. It, it's just something that I was reading. Uh, 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 yes, it's Christian. It's Christian. How can I deny a, a friend of mine named Luke? I, Commander, you're, you're not going to take this one, too. You already have my copies of Matthew and Mark, and you never return anything. All right. All right. What can I do except go mad in this cave with nothing to read? Yes, yes, take it. Take it if you must. Yes. Good day to you. Good day to you, too, sir. Oh. Oh, is he gone? <laughs> There's more than one way to get a pagan to read the word. <laughs> oh, he doesn't know it yet, but, but next he's going to confiscate Paul's epistles. Uh, uh, beloved, I, I do pray for that man. I, I pray for him every day. I'm afraid that, that I'm not a good example of the Lord to you. That bothers me. My, my brother James had a temper too. He was worse than I was. Am. I, I beg your pardon? When did I what? Oh, when did I first see the Lord? <laughs> well, beloved, I'll never forget that day. You see, Andrew and I had to help my, my um, fa uh, father deliver his salt preserve fish to his customers in Jerusalem. And on this one journey, we kept hearing about a new prophet called John the Baptist. We, we found him on, on the Jordan River. He was a he was a burly, wild-haired giant, all clothed in animal skins. Uh, he, he was physically strong, spiritually intense. And when he baptized me, he taught me how to pray at the same time. Held me under so long, I came up sputtering the sincerest prayer of my life. But, but what, a, oh, what a voice. What a voice the Baptist had. He could out bellow a camel, and he often had to. <laughs> but but you, couldn't, you couldn't fail to hear his message. Repent! I baptize you in water to prepare you for the one who is coming. He it is who will baptize you in the fire of the Holy Spirit. The one who is coming. Oh, I, I first met Jesus on a on a beautiful spring day at a crossing uh, uh, on the Jordan River called Bethabara. Andrew and I were, were helping the Baptist baptize there in the sunny, cool current. And, and I, suddenly I, I, I sensed a, a strange quiet. Yeah, I, I, I looked up and I saw the Baptist gazing at the far shore. 
there was a there was a solitary man standing there, a stranger, and he stepped into the water and he came and he, he stood before the Baptist. Now the Baptist was was usually fiery, but he was he was subdued that day. He said, Do you do you come to me when it is I who should be baptized by you? The stranger turned and said, Let it be so now. We must fulfill all things righteously. Well, the Baptist baptizes him there, and, and as the stranger leaves us, the Baptist turns to Andrew and me, and he says, Do you see? Do you see the Holy Spirit descend on him like a dove out of heaven? This is he. This is he for whom the world has been waiting. Now follow him. Well, well we followed him. And when we caught up to him, I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say, beloved. I, I, I just said, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi, where are you staying? <sighs> Jesus turned and he said, come and see. Well, well, we stayed with him, beloved, all that day talked about everything in the world and, and around, around the fireside that night. And the next morning, Jesus asked Andrew and me to go north into Galilee with him. And on that six-day journey, I, I observed Jesus very closely. I, I sensed in him things that I had never seen in anyone before or since that he was uh, intelligent and, and warm and, and loving and good goes without saying. But, but in him, in him, these were, these were not aspirations. They were accomplishments, all made solid by a, by a total command of mind and body. Scriptural scholarship vast. But, but he enjoyed good company, everyday conversation. And, and, and oh, Oh, when he, when he spoke with someone, when, when he talked with you, beloved, he, Jesus knew your needs, your heartaches, your, your dearest dreams. And from that day forward, you were, you were never the same. Well, and, and he asked Andrew and me to follow him. I, I still don't understand it, beloved. I, I'm sincere about that. I, I really don't. Uh, it, and the only thing that gave me courage was from the first moment I saw him, I said to myself, he needs a friend. And, then, and this may surprise you. I, I said, perhaps I can be that friend. And that's exactly how it turned out. Well, when Andrew and I got to Capernaum, I ran to get my brother James, and, and he hurried to get his brother Simon Peter. <laughs> now, 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 Peter was already known all around the Sea of Galilee for his, um, uh, well, shall we say, his somewhat stormy emotional nature. And we hurried to get, to get Philip and, and Andrew, too, uh, Philip and, and uh, Nathaniel, too, because, uh, because we wanted them all to meet Jesus. You see, beloved, we, we were very ordinary men. We had no education except our trade and, and what we had learned growing up in the synagogue. But... But Jesus spoke to us in, in ways that we could understand. Hey, I will make you fishers of men. It would be a, a long time before we, before we even began to, to realize what he, what he really had in mind. I, I remember, I remember our first lesson. Yeah, our first shock, really, came when, when Jesus gave us his view of Messiah. Now, now we and, and all Jews, we were, 
we were looking for another Joshua, another King David that would drive out the Roman parasites forever. But, but Jesus proved to us from Scripture that, that not only Israel, but all the Gentile world was to be saved. The Gentiles. And then he showed us that Messiah was not only a lord of battle, but that he was a prince of peace. And that his, his kingdom would last longer than and be greater than the Romans because it would be where they or anyone like them could never invade or conquer it. It would be in the hearts of good people who love God and treasure peace. That's, that's you, beloved. The kingdom of God. I, I didn't understand it for a long time, but, but I understand it better now every time I, I, I look into your faces. Miracles. Did I see miracles? <laughs> oh, yes, beloved. I, I saw many miracles, some before great numbers of astonished people. Uh, like there was the time that, uh, uh, that Jesus changed the water into fine table wine at the wedding in Cana. You know, it was in that same city, yes, that that a nobleman came to him seeking healing for his sick boy who was in far away Capernaum. Yes. And as that grief-stricken father found out when he got home, his boy had been healed even as he spoke with Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus cured so many. There was the blind man, a man born blind, and, and the lame man at the pool of Siloam. Favorite. My favorite miracle. I, I would have to say uh, the, the feeding of the thousands. Yes. Yeah, yeah, possibly because it, it meant so much to me personally. Uh, you see, beloved, uh, uh, Jesus' miracles had more than one purpose. They they were public proofs that he was who he said he was, but, but they, were, they were also private signs to us, his disciples. And when we got through feeding 5,000 hungry men and their families with what that little boy had in his basket, three small barley loaves and two salt fish, I began to understand little, little, could be much in Jesus' hands. And he could take the little that I was and, and change me into something useful for his great purpose. Do the same for you. Well, right there I decided that if Jesus were willing to attempt the impossible, the least I could do was cooperate. And, and after that the crowds grew. I don't blame them, really. It was the best bread I ever tasted. We, we took up 12 baskets of leftovers and had them for supper that night. Uh, hey, 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 Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Speak up, young man. I, I can't hear you. I, oh, yes. If the people love Jesus... Why did the temple authorities hate him? Yes. They preferred their kingdom to God's. The temple spies began to follow us everywhere. Herod arrested John the Baptist and had him beheaded. And everything that Jesus did took on a new urgency. He chose six more of us to become his 12 messengers, apostles. Uh, there was Matthew, the ex-tax collector, and James, his brother. Uh, there was Judas, my nephew. And, and then there was, uh, yes, there was Thomas, Thomas the twin, and, and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and Simon, the former zealot, and, and yes, Judas from the town of Kiriath. And Jesus spoke to us that day in unmistakable terms. Uh, he said he was looking for a small group of men, but, but men who knew precisely what they believed and why. He, we were not to judge people. We were not to judge people. 
We were to show them how to be forgiving and, and to be forgiven, how, how to be uh, released from their, uh, the sin enslaving them. Uh, we were to, uh, we were to uh, 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 show them how to have a new life, transforming relationship with the Father. We, we were to proclaim God's kingdom on earth. It was a day to choose, and, and we pledged ourselves to him. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, the, the fame of it flew before us and, and struck deeply into the hearts of the priests. What, what people would not want a king that, that, that could raise the dead? Could all the legions of Rome defeat an Israel led by such a power? This was what the priests were afraid that the people were thinking, and they were right. Jesus entered Jerusalem. Thousands greeted him, waving palm branches, laying their clothes as a pathway for the coat that he was riding on. And they, they even shouted the, the traditional greeting for a victorious king of Israel. Hosanna! Hosanna to the son of David! And the priests trembled. It was obvious to, to all who had eyes that if the people wanted him to make them king, all Jesus had to do was to say so. And right then, they decided to kill him. That night at Lazarus' house in Bethany, when Peter demanded that Jesus save himself, he got the most terrible rebuke. Get thee behind me, Satan. You're seeing things as men see them, Peter. Begin to see things as God sees them. From that hour, Peter carried a hidden sword. A few nights later, on the eve of Passover, we had our last supper together in the, in the upper room of the house owned by Mark's parents. Now, now, now I, I know that uh, uh, everything that Jesus said that night, uh, you've already heard from Matthew, Mark, and, and Luke's gospel, but, uh, but I have a few remembrances of my own. I remember after supper, Judas got up and went out on an errand. Wasn't supposed to do that, the Passover, you know. And, and we all felt a, a tremendous heaviness come over us. Jesus knew, but, but he didn't try to spare our feelings. He, it was as if he was saying, now, now you are no longer disciples. Now you are ministers. Now you must stand. Love one another. If you love one another, the world will know that you are mine. The hour is coming when, when all of you will run away and leave me, but I'll not be alone because the Father is always with me. At this point, Peter leaps to his feet and says, Master! Master, I'll never leave you. I, I'll lay down my life for you. Would you, Peter? Peter, before the rooster crows, you will have denied three times even knowing me. When I say I go to the Father, your hearts are filled with sorrow, but, but I must go that you might receive the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, your wisdom and your understanding. Without him, you can accomplish nothing. But, but if I go, I will come to you again. And then nothing, nothing will ever take away your joy. Don't be afraid of what the world can do to us now. I have overcome the world. With that, he, he prayed that none of us would be lost in what was coming, and, and we followed him out into the, into the clear, starry night, up the dark ravine of Kidron, uh, along the temple walls, their drains uh, gushing out the blood of thousands of Passover lambs now being slaughtered on the altars within. 
I'll, I'll never forget the feeling that came over me as I, as I saw Jesus step across that scarlet coursing flood. Before long, we, we came to our favorite garden spot, Gethsemane. Jesus asked Peter, James, and me to stay near him as he prayed, and, and in the moonlight we saw him cast himself to the ground, stricken of soul. We, we wanted to go to him to, to give him what comfort we could, but, but, but we never interfered with his times of prayer. I, I, I sat down next to an olive tree. For, for what seemed like just a moment, I, I, I let my eyes close. And the next thing I knew, I, I, I felt Jesus' hands on my shoulder. On his face was dark sweat, like, like, like great drops of blood. And oh, oh, the sadness in his voice. John, John, could you not watch with me this little while? My best friend, my Lord, had been in the lake of fire, and, and I had been asleep. Peter cries out a warning. Yes, Peter, I, I see them. Torches, spears, helmets coming up from Kidron. Uh, master, master, we must leave here. Uh, but master, uh, they're coming to arrest us. Uh, yeah, but Peter, he... It, look. Leading them... Judas. Judas! The, the soldiers sweep in through the gates. Jesus steps forward and confronts the captain. Who do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. The soldiers fall backward to the ground. Such was his power over them had he chosen to use it. Again, Jesus confronts the captain. I am the one you seek. Let these go. The captain hesitates as if bewildered by his own weakened will, and, and then he motions to his men. Peter leaps forward and cuts off the ear of Malchus, the high priest's servant. Jesus intervenes. Peter, put away that sword. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? With that, I, I panicked. I, I, I ran into the olive grove, and coward that I was, I... I hid myself amongst the trees. Somehow in the, in the moon shadows, Peter finds me. He, he wants to follow the retreating line of torches, but I say, no, Peter, no, no, they, they let us go once. They won't again, Peter. Why should we risk that? Because we love him. But, but Peter, I... Yes. Yes, because we love him. We caught up with the temple guards as they, were, as they were entering the courtyard of the house owned by Annas, the ex-high priest, who, who next to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, was the most powerful man in Jerusalem. A, a servant girl was keeping the door, and, and somehow she, she remembered me as the fishmonger boy from Galilee, but, but not Peter. Aren't you... Aren't you one of this Jesus followers? No, certainly not. She believes him and lets him in. Inside, the guards had, had built a fire, and, and as we were warming ourselves, another guard sees Peter, and he says, Here, you, you look like one of this Nazarene's men. No, I, I wouldn't know the man if I saw him. Well, there's a commotion inside the house, and, and Jesus is led into the courtyard. Yeah, there's a bruise on his cheek, on his lip, a trace of blood, and he, he looks towards us, but for our sake, he, he gives no sign that he knows us. Another guard confronts Peter. Here, yeah, you are in Gethsemane tonight. 
I was not in Gethsemane tonight. You were the one with the sword. Sword? I'm a fisherman. What would I know how to do with a sword? You were the one who protected him. Protected him? Why would I, why would I protect a man I don't even... I don't even know. A rooster crowed. And in Jesus' eyes, I... I saw a haunting sadness as they led him away. Outside the compound, Peter weeps. The stones of the alleyway grind his knees, his hands, even his face. Uh, he howls to the night sky, Lord God, have mercy on me and on Judas Iscariot. But I, I felt no pity for Peter. Does that surprise you? I had not denied the master. But then Jesus' words came to me from the dark garden. John, John, could you not watch with me this little while? And I see my own sin against him. <sighs> ah. Outside the city walls, the sunlight warms our backs as we follow the Romans to the place where they, where they like to kill our people. A little hill called Golgotha, shaped like a human skull. Peter and I hide in the mob, afraid of arrest. And with Jesus are, are two thieves. The Romans crucify them first. They resist, screaming and struggling like mutilated animals. And then... And then on the ground between them, Jesus, Jesus lays himself on his cross. He, he offers his hands and his feet. And I remember his words. No man takes my life from me. I lay it down of myself. Iron spikes, falling hammers, blood spurting from wrists and ankles. Oh, God! And they raise the cross, and, and, and the full weight of Jesus' body falls on his flowing wounds, and still he does not cry out. A Roman soldier raises a ladder and, and nails a sign above Jesus' head. Uh, Jesus, the Nazarene, King of the Jews. The Roman governor has, has made a joke. Angry Pharisees push past us. Take down that sign. He's not our king. Roman spears push them back. We have our orders. It's days. And so, in mockery and jest, Jesus is first proclaimed. To the nations. Jesus speaks. <laughs> Father, <laughs> forgive them, <laughs> for they know not what they do. Even now, he, he prays for the soldiers at the, at the foot of his cross, gambling over his clothes. And, and suddenly, I, I, I realize something. They crucified him in, under orders in pagan ignorance. And these Pharisees standing by so self-righteously, they condemned him, thinking they were doing God a service. But what of us? What of us, his twelve? We had followed him for three years. We had seen his signs and wonders. We had learned the secret of who he was. And still, 
Still we betrayed him, we deserted him, and we denied him, and I see the damning difference. We knew what we did. Four women approach the cross, brave women, weeping. And Jesus' mother and her sister, and the mother of Matthew and James, and, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus' mother looks at me, and there's such terrible anguish in her eyes. I, I'm going to her, Peter. I, I don't care what they can do to me now. I, I, why, why should I care? My life means nothing to me now. Oh, my God. <laughs> the place where they've planted the cross, <laughs> Jesus' blood mixes with the, with the dark earth, uh, making a dark red mud. His ankles swollen uh, and disjointed by, 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 by iron spikes, uh, lacerated knees, uh, cramping thighs, modesty outraised, his whip torn chest and arms, he being for breath. Beneath, beneath the blood dripping thorns, Jesus' eyes find mine. He's always known my thoughts. Can he read them now? Does he know my grief, my pain, my sorrow? His eyes, his eyes are looking at me, from me to his, to his mother. She comes to my arms. He rises on the nails. <laughs> Woman, behold your son. <laughs> son, behold your mother. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus stares at the horizon, his eyes dancing madly as if, as if seeing horrors that even he who cast out demons could not bear to look on. He rises on the nails. <laughs> My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Spear point rises and gores into Jesus' side. Blood and water 
flow out into the dusty earth. Blood and water, the certain mark of death. Now come Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. They, they had dared to go to Pontius Pilate to beg for his body. And in life, uh, while he yet lived, uh, their, their discipleship was compromised by fear and hesitation and prudent concealment. But now, now no sooner is he dead than by their very presence here, they openly declare for him. And Peter, too, standing with me for all the world to see. And I remember his words when I am lifted up. I will draw all men unto me. Even now it's working. The strangely compelling power of the cross. We, we raise a ladder, extract the stubborn nails in it, <laughs> and take our murdered Master down. He ends his life as it began, cradled in his mother's arms. We, we follow Joseph down the hill to his, to his own private garden and, and a fresh new-cut tomb. Peter and I carry Jesus' body inside it. And with Nicodemus' hundredweight, a mirror and aloes, we, we give him what burial we can. There's a, there's a silken scarf for his head and, and a body shroud made of the finest woven linen to cover him front and back. I, I arrange the folds around his shoulders and, and his arms uh, as if that will keep him warm in the chill and the dampness of the tomb. And then... And then something evil, something hovering, hovering, uh, craving entrance into the tomb or, or into us. Peter, do you hear it? Whispering, mocking. I will sift you now as weak, you who also are forsaken. A day, a night, another day, another night. Peter and I hide in fear and anguish, thinking of all we'd seen and lost. And the words of Jesus on the cross kept going over and over in my mind. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you and there was no doubting what it meant, but there seemed to be something more, something, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, something from my, from my, from my childhood, from, from my childhood in the synagogue. Yes, yeah, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Is the first line of a psalm of David. Yes, uh, what was Jesus in his, in his deepest agony praying David's prophecy? Or was he just despairing? Eh, o preli botrasitike. Ye prende yo sacayende yo coyo sasita. Y le muere yo coyo lande. Yo coye le stindli mokotai. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words that I cry? Iriam rotoy arabarastaye. I am poured out like water. They number all my bones. They pierced my hands and my feet. Uria prikiste. They part my garments amongst them and cast lots for my clothes. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out their lip. They shake their head, saying, He trusted in the Lord. He trusted in the Lord. He trusted. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Some people don't like these. But, but I've acquired a taste for them from John the Baptist. <laughs> That's right. Locusts and wild honey. Care for some? Anyone? <laughs> well, all the more for me. <laughs> I was just thinking. Jesus had a wondrous singing voice. How many of you knew that? Well, he did. In fact, all of the disciples liked to sing. All except for Judas. I don't know why Judas never sang with us. He had a fine speaking voice. But, but we used to love to sing with Jesus as we walked along the highways. Uh, 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 we, uh, we, uh, we were sharp. Uh, we were flat. <laughs> Peter just loud. <laughs> but yeah, uh, would you like to sing one of P Peter's favorite songs? Would you? Uh, good, good. It's a very easy one. Uh, uh, Andrew wrote, wrote the words, and I made up the music myself. Uh, it, it goes like this. Uh, you'll catch on very quickly. Lord God Almighty, Thou art holy, maker of the sea and land, the universe and skies. Lord God Almighty, Thou art holy, Dwell within my heart and mind, my fingers and my eyes. Lie, 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 Lord God Almighty, Thou art holy. Maker of the sea and land, the universe and skies. Lord God Almighty, Thou art holy. Dwell within my heart and mind, my fingers and my eyes. Lie, 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 lie. La 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 Oh <laughs> I I was just thinking as as I was singing there. Yeah, the time that Peter was walking along and he really got into the spirit of that song. He had his eyes raised to heaven, his his hands lifted in praise. And he fell right into an irrigation ditch. <laughs> oh, how we laughed. Yeah. But, but, well, Andrew and I tried to help him out, but, but he, he shrugged us off and wouldn't allow us to. But, but it was only a, a few miles till he was, he was back to his, his normal outgoing self. Yeah, I suppose I, I shouldn't be so blatant about it, but... But Peter, he was my favorite. He was my, yeah, you, you just couldn't help but like the man. He, yeah, he was a walking bundle of outrageous extremes. Yeah, no one, no one praised and encouraged Jesus as much as Peter did. And, and no one, no one interrupted and interfered with Jesus as much as Peter did. Uh, but I, I, I must tell you, beloved, Peter was never the same after the Lord let him walk on water. It's true. It's true. Walking on water is a heady thing, beloved. It, it would change you, too. He, he, was just so, he was just so courageous after that. He, it was only a, a few steps, but... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> These little legs get in your teeth. <laughs> well, yeah, I just, I'll never forget Peter. 
he just couldn't seem to get over the fact that he felt that Jesus would not forgive him. And that was his problem. But, but no sooner had Mary Magdalene come and, and claimed that the tomb was empty, the body gone, than, than Peter was up uh, uh, dragging me out the door. Oh, how we ran. <laughs> how we ran through the streets of Jerusalem that morning. Only this time I arrived first. I, I, I saw the soldiers' watch fires. They, uh, there was no one around. The tomb was open, the stone rolled away, but I was afraid to go in. Peter comes running up, takes one look, and goes directly into the tomb. I follow. It, the body's gone. Peter, uh, these linens, uh, these linens have... Uh, if someone stole the body, they wouldn't strip it first, would they? These grave clothes, Peter, they've not been moved. These, you, you see the shoulders, see these folds, the arms? I arranged these folds myself, Peter. I am the resurrection and the life. Peter, do you remember? at Lazarus' tomb. I am the resurrection and the life. Yes, I believe, Peter. I believe that something wonderful has happened here. Yes, Jesus has raised up our temple again. Yes, yes, Peter, we must tell the others, Jesus is alive and he's coming. Andrew, James, Jesus is alive. He's risen. Philip, Nathaniel, Jesus is risen. He's alive. By the evening of that day, Peter and I had found all the twelve, except for, except for Judas and Thomas, who had, who had believed his doubts and left Jerusalem. We gathered together again in the upper room, and, and this time Peter had, had difficult news. Brethren, I hate to tell you this, but, but I have bad news for you. Judas is dead. Ashamed of what he did, he, he hanged himself. Well, there was, there was vengeful approval in the room. And Peter rebuked us. He said, Are any of us without wine? Can we not follow the Lord's commandment just this once and not condemn Judas? We must pray for ourselves that we fall not into a greater temptation. And just then, Mary Magdalene spoke. I saw the Lord this morning outside the tomb. Saw the Lord? Yeah. Mary, I was in the garden this morning, and so was Peter, and we didn't see the Lord. Why would he appear only to you? Well, why wouldn't he appear to me? Because I'm a woman? Maybe the Lord's trying to tell you men something. Well, there was no doubting her sincerity, but I doubted. 
Just then there was a sound in the shadows by the door. Into the light stepped Jesus. His, his arms were open and greeting. His face was smiling, and he said, Shalom, peace be to you. We were petrified. Yeah, I hesitate to tell you this, beloved, but, but we didn't want to come anywhere near him. Uh, Jesus, uh, he, he just smiled and he said, uh, uh, Don't be afraid, it's me, John. Come here. Well, well I had no choice but to, but to take his hand. It was warm, real. Uh, the, the nail wound was was healing. Jesus showed us his side, and the imprint of the spear was closed and fading, and suddenly we realized that Jesus had returned to us, uh, not as a spirit or in a vision, but he himself in the flesh, as he said he would, from the cross to the grave. Death itself could not hold him. Oh, beloved, how we praised God that day. And, and Jesus stayed with us that night. And, and before he left, he, 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 he prayed for us and he breathed on us and he said, Receive, receive, receive the Holy Spirit. Then he was gone, down the wooden steps and out. I, I could still see him standing there in the cold, dark night. Jesus appeared to us again in Jerusalem. And, and this time, this time Thomas was with us. Now, Thomas, uh, Thomas had said, Unless I put my finger in the nail wound and, and my hand in his side, I will never believe. Well, Thomas was a strong man, and he desperately wanted to be sure. And Jesus, uh, and Jesus knew Thomas boast, and he made him carry it out. And, and Thomas fell on his knees and said, My Lord and my God! Jesus looked at Thomas, and then he looked at all of us, and he said, Have you believed only because you've seen? Blessed are they who will never see and yet believe. He was speaking of a, of a faith far greater than we, his twelve, would, would ever know, beloved. He was speaking of a faith like yours. Well, then Jesus told us to go home. <laughs> home, <laughs> Galilee, <laughs> and home we went. Uh, we, we worked on my father's neglected boats. We scraped and painted halls. We repaired uh, uh, rigging, uh, uh, suspicion and fear, doubt, because he had said he'd come to us, but still no word. Uh, we, we mended the, the sails and fixed the nets, and, and still nothing, uh, uh, suspicion and doubt. Had we really seen what we thought we had seen? And now... Now Thomas is emphatic. He said he's coming to us. Why do you doubt? Well, the next morning, Peter leaps to his feet and he says, I'm going fishing. We said, we're coming with you. And we fished. We fished all that night. And the sun, and we caught nothing. The sun came up red on the horizon, and, and I knew it was going to be a hot day. And as we drew closer to the shore, there was a solitary man on the beach. He called out to us, Lads, have you any fish? No, we've caught nothing. Try the next landing. Cast to the right, and you'll find. Well, instantly Peter and I locked eyes. This preposterous proposition we'd heard once before. Immediately we cast our nets to the starboard, and suddenly they were full of fish. Fat, choice, hundreds of them. Peter, it's the Lord. Peter dives overboard and swims to shore. We follow along in the boat, dragging this enormous catch there on the beach sat Peter and Jesus. They had made a, 
a fire of coals and, and they were baking bread and they were ready for the fish. And Jesus says, come, come and eat with me. Oh, beloved, it was, uh, it was like old times, uh, good fellowship by the lake, uh, hot food, and, and oh, the life in him. Oh, the life in him, beloved. Yeah, I, those eyes, I, I can still see those eyes. Eyes that I had closed with coins in the tomb. Eyes so vibrant and alive. Oh, the stories I could tell you, beloved. Jesus returning to the Father, yeah, the Holy Spirit descending on us at Pentecost, and we did preach fearlessly. We, we gained power, beloved, believe me. We, we, we preached in the streets and in the temple itself, and, and thousands believed. The Jewish church took root. But it wasn't until our our first Gentile mission, when we began to evangelize the Gentiles, that the, that the Romans, our, our most dedicated enemies, in scorn gave us the name that has blessed us, Christians. And then tragedy. Tragedy sowed the seeds of the gospel to the farthest reaches of, of the Roman Empire. The Jewish zealots threw the Roman garrison out of Jerusalem. The Romans returned with a legion and laid siege. They took no prisoners. A, a, a forest of crosses began to grow around the holy city. It was only by a miracle eating that Jesus' mother and I escaped to Ephesus where Timothy's church took us in. And soon after that, the Romans broke into the inner wall. And Jesus' tearful prophecy came to pass. There was not one stone left standing on another. Over a million Jews were exterminated. Oh, beloved, beloved, be wary. The world must never see such a thing again. I beg your pardon? Would I, would I what? <laughs> would I write a gospel? Oh, oh beloved, I, beloved, uh, copying as we do here is one thing, but, but writing now, now that's another thing entirely. Uh, you see, uh, Matthew and Luke and, and Mark are setting down Peter's words. Now, now they wrote primarily according to the Jewish point of view. Uh, uh, they, they, uh, they explained Jesus' life and ministry as the long-awaited Messiah of, of Jewish Scripture, and that he was in the light of the prophets. But, but to the Greek and, and the Roman mind, this, this means very little in terms of their tradition. No, no, what they need is a, is a different but, but faithful approach. I can only pray, seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I, I hesitate to tell you something, beloved, and not because I don't love you or trust you, but be, because I'm not sure that I have it clear enough in my own mind to, to make it understandable. The commander, not long ago, uh, uh, began to allow me a walk each day along the cliffs, uh, and, and, and it was there on the Lord's Day that, that I came into the Spirit. Yeah, I, heard a, I heard a voice behind me. It was like a trumpet in the sunny air. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. I turned and I, I saw seven golden candlesticks and walking in the midst of them, one like unto the Son of Man, his hair glistening snow, his eyes fire, his, his face the sun in all of its power. He spoke again and this time his voice like the sound of many rushing waters. Write this revelation in a book and send it to the churches. The heavens opened up, and, and I flew above a sea of crystal to the, to the rainbow throne of God. A book 
the prophecy of the Lamb's ultimate triumph. Uh, sealed with seven seals, the Lamb of God opens the seals and tribulation dawns, uh, war and pestilence, famine and death right across the earth. Now, the rich and the powerful, the, the, the weak and the poor, the famous and the obscure, all hide themselves in mountains and caves. God's wrath is come. Who can stand? And then, and then, and then from the from the sky, I, I saw, I, I saw a fiery, a, a fiery star. It, it falls into the sea. A great mountain of fire comes up. The cities of the nations are burned to dust in an hour. They all perish. Millions, millions, millions die. The rest, the rest pray for death, but, but death eludes them to its own good time. And now, now no, no lamplight shines. No, no working men, no, no careful wives, no children playing. The, the, the voice of the bride and the bridegroom is heard no more. And then when I, when I thought it had all ended, from heaven uh, there comes a, a golden city. And from all of time, from all of the world, the raptured faithful gather at the gates and, and they open uh, angels, angels of the heavenly host. And Jesus, he said, come in. Come in, this is the place that I prepared for you. Our Father awaits us. Oh, it's a, it's a wonder that, that my mind contained all that the glorified Christ revealed to me. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Pappy is here. He'd heard speaking in tongues before, but never anything like this. Yeah. And, and Jesus' words kept going over and over in my mind. Write this revelation in the book, but... But Alpha and Omega, the ministry of Jesus might best be understood by the, by the Gentile mind as the Logos, the Word, the wisdom, the order, the logic of God come to earth. Yes, yes, the mind of God made man. Yes. Yes, and this has been from the beginning. Jesus, sinless life and self-sacrifice upon the cross, a perfect example of the Father's uh, uh, eternal love for mankind. Yes, Alpha. <laughs> Alpha. And even then, Jesus was with the Father and will be there, Omega, until all the end when all the revelation that I have seen has come to pass. Yes, it's as Paul told me so long ago, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Timothy, uh, Timothy, come in, come in, my son. Yes, yes. Uh, well, uh, well uh, I'm sure you know most of our guests. I, well, well, no, I, I'm sure they wouldn't mind. I, uh, all right. Uh, beloved, uh, Timothy has something he, he wants to share with me. Please excuse us. Uh, Beloved, we have just learned that the Romans in the city of Achaia where he was preaching, the Romans have crucified Luke. Oh, Luke, beloved physician. <laughs> Well, they, they have stilled his mortal voice. But the God whispered words that he gave us. They'll never stop them now. Jesus said that his church would be a costly bride, and, and as always, his prophecy is true. Her price has, has proven to be unsearchable uh, 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 terror and, and rivers of blood. It, it began with Stephen, when Paul, not yet one of us, had him stoned on the streets of Jerusalem. My brother James was next.
beheaded for preaching the risen Christ in the temple. Matthias, Matthias tied to a cross, draped with carrion, eaten by vultures. Judadius, Judadius crucified and shot to death with arrows. And Nathaniel, oh, Nathaniel, skinned alive and crucified in double agony. Philip was hanged from the column of a Greek temple. Andrew crucified in Egypt. Matthew beheaded in Alexandria. Mark dragged to death behind a chariot. James Alpheus thrown from Herod's temple roof. Thomas speared by a mob. Uh, Simon the, the Zealot uh, sawn to pieces alive. Peter and Paul were, were taken in Rome. While thousands of believers uh, gorged Nero's lions uh, in the Colosseum, Paul beheaded on the Appian Way. Peter, Peter was forced to watch his beloved wife crucified on Vatican Hill, and all through her agony, he cried out to her, Oh, thou beloved, oh, thou beloved, remember Christ, remember Christ. Peter felt unworthy to die as the Lord had, so he asked to be, and he was, crucified head downward. Beloved, if anyone comes to you and, and says, I will believe your gospel if you can give me one proof, tell them, tell them of these very ordinary men who overturned the world and preached to the very end, some from their own crosses, uh, the life-giving truth of the triumphant risen Christ. What's that, Papias? A message from the commander. Let me see it. God forbid that, God forbid that he's changed his mind on helping the prisoners. Timothy, Emperor Domitianus is dead. The Senate has declared an amnesty. The Christian persecution is over. Oh, God, Lord God, King of the universe, you have delivered us out of the hands of our adversaries. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Timothy. Think of it, Timothy. <laughs> thousands have died, yes, but thousands more will live. And, and Papias, uh, the churches can worship once again openly. And, and uh, oh, we can visit them all together. Oh, how they'll welcome us, Papias. Commander, Commander, come in, come in all. Thank you for the good news, sir. When can we leave? Today. Splendid, splendid. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, now I'll give up helping the prisoners. Uh, it, uh, Commander, you are, uh, you are, uh, you are a trial to me, Commander. What makes you think that just because I, I, I'll be free in Ephesus that I'll give up helping those prisoners? In Ephesus, Commander, I can help them even more. Yes, yes, yes. What new condition? Uh, Christian education. For who? For you. Now, Commander, if this is some kind of trick, I... Well, no, no, no. Yes, I believe you. Yes, yes, yes. I believe you. I... Yes, I praise God. Praise God. You see there? I, I, it just took me unawares. That's all. I, only if I instruct you. But, but Commander, that would, that would take possibly months. I, uh, yeah, uh, surely you can't believe that the Lord would want me. God's ways are not our ways. Where did you hear that? 
a footnote in the Gospel of Luke that I gave you. Lord, why do you answer my dearest prayers at the worst possible time? Yeah, what's that, Papias? You'll, you'll stay if I will. I, but I, well, Timothy, I, I'm surrounded. I, but, but would I have time to write in Ephesus? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, the, the Lord's command, I cannot defy that. Uh, a, a revelation, possibly a gospel. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All right, Papias, you, you go with Timothy down, down to the pier, and, and you, tell the, you tell the pilot of the boat that I won't be going, but you be aboard and, and be back here in 48 hours with, with a barrel of ink, a, a bale of papyrus, and five flocks of geese worth of quill pins. And, uh, and uh, you, Commander, so you want to learn about Jesus, do you? Well, you're going to right here uh, as I dictate to Papias, right? Yes, Commander, right here in this cave. You've made it home to me now. No, no, we cannot begin immediately. Go, go, you're going to need your rest, but be back here sunrise after next, and don't keep the Holy Spirit waiting. Well, well, God bless you too, brother. Well, beloved, <laughs> wonder of wonders. Beloved, we, we've had good fellowship together. And I got to walk and talk with Jesus again. And, and as usual, I love him more. And, and I'm beginning to understand what he has in mind for the rest of my life. And so if the Father will, will spare me the days and, and the Spirit will lead, I will give the churches what they've asked for, a, a gospel for the Greeks and the Romans, and this shall be its message. God so loved us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This, uh, this is what he offered us, beloved. Life, life has come. Death is conquered. Hell itself can never prevail in your life again. This is why I, I, I preach these things to you, that you might have victory in fellowship with us. Uh, what my eyes have seen, what my hands have uh, touched, uh, that you might have victory in fellowship with us, even as our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. Oh, oh, beloved. The next time that fear enters your, uh, your mind, uh, uh, disease your body, death and enslavement your spirit, speak the name of the Prince of Life. Speak the name of Jesus and hell itself will be put under your feet. We are not born of blood. We are not born of the will of the flesh. We are not born of the will of men. We are the sons and the daughters of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know this, uh, that when he comes again, and he will, let no man take that from you. When he comes again, we shall see him as he is, uh, and we shall be like him. Oh, little children. Be like him now. Love one another. If you love one another, the world will know that you are his. Oh, little children, love one another. I want to talk to you for just a moment. Those of you that are watching, I want you to think about what you've just seen. These disciples, they were afraid. They were running in fear. They left afraid because they were going to be taken as well. But something happened to them within just a few days. Within just a few days, suddenly they became courageous. So courageous that they stood out in public. So courageous that they hollered out to the world that Jesus Christ is risen. So courageous, so courageous that they gave their lives to let you know, 
to let us know this day that Jesus lives and that he loves you. Today, give your heart to him. Give your heart to him. Just turn your life completely over to him right now and, and find a, a gospel-believing church and, and go and, and they'll explain more to you. Go and you will find out that Jesus is alive and he will begin to live in your heart and your life will change beginning right now. I pray that Jesus touch you in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen.